Adlib is a turnkey database library solution for Altium designer users. It takes the pain out of setting up and running a centralized component management solution so you can spend more time designing new products with your component library rather than administering it. It can run on just about any mainstream operating system and all you need is a web browser to talk to it. So let's take a running leap into the wonderful world of database libraries with Adlib. To begin with, I'll start the Adlib server. It's a virtual machine that runs on Oracle's free VirtualBox virtualization platform, which is the key to keeping Adlib self-contained and able to run on just about any operating system. Once the Adlib server has initialized, it can be accessed from a web browser. The home page offers a simple login screen, which should immediately tell you something about Adlib, and that is that it offers permission controls so you can manage who in your organization is allowed to read and write to it. Logging in as an administrator gives me write access to everything, including creating user accounts. Librarians get write access to all the component data, and users get basic read access. Regardless of which level you log in with, the first page you'll see is this home page. It provides a running history of all library changes, which tells you something else about Adlib, and that is that it has history tracking, so you can not only control who can change what, but you can also see what people have changed. We'll bypass all that for the time being and jump straight to the component library, since that's where you'll probably spend most of your time. And as you can see from this list, I've created a number of component tables or component categories according to the types of components I'm storing. We'll start with the resistors table because that's a pretty easy place to begin. This view provides a tabular view of all the resistors that are currently defined in the library with each row corresponding to a unique component. These first few columns are defined by the system and managed automatically. But these other columns are user-defined, and you can have as many or as few columns as you wish. Each column will eventually translate into a parameter that will be optionally stored with the component when it gets placed into the design. You can create new components with this button here, but usually it's easier to start a new component by cloning data from an existing one. For that, or to edit an existing component, click on this item number here to see its detail record. By default, the component detail view is read-only, so to make any changes, you'll need to click the Edit button, and you can also clone or delete the component using these buttons. But let's just pause for a moment to talk about these parameters. By default, Altium only needs five parameters to be able to place a schematic symbol and its associated footprint into a design. The item parameter is the primary identifier for each component and must be globally unique. Usually, the corporate part number will be inserted here as that is the parameter that is used to identify the component throughout the organization. Adlib will not accept two components with the same item number. The next required parameters are the library ref and the library path. When this component is placed into the design, Outim Designer will extract the schematic symbol defined by the library ref parameter from the schematic library defined by the library path parameter, and it will place it into the schematic sheet. In other words, library ref defines the symbol and library path defines the library that the symbol can be found in. A similar relationship exists for the PCB footprint, and the footprint with the name footprint ref is extracted from the library defined by footprint path and placed onto the PCB design when it's transferred from the schematic to the PCB. The description and resistance parameters are additional attributes that describe the component in a more meaningful way. In fact, there's no limit to the number of parameters that you can define in Adlib so you can capture whatever additional attributes you may wish to help with selecting and sourcing components. And just as an aside, these three parameters down here are used by Solution Quadrant Step Link extension, so you can link to component step models rather than having to embed them within the PCB footprint. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of how component information is stored in the database library, let's jump across to Altium Designer to see how it makes use of that information. Database library connections are managed by a dblib file in Altium Designer. I won't go into all of the technical details because most of it is set and forget, but you may find it helpful to know that this area here 
tells Altium what field to use as the primary key. And these mappings here define how database parameters will be mapped to Altium Designer component parameters. In effect, we could have used any parameter names in AdLib to define the symbol and footprint information. But it's much simpler to use the names that Altium Designer is expecting, because it saves in the setup since Altium Designer can map them automatically. Moving across to the Table Browser tab, and we can see the contents of the component category much the same as we could see in AdLib. And up here is a list of the individual component categories that we've defined in AdLib. Database library files only need to be defined once when the system is first established, and after that, you can treat them like any other library and load them into the library panel. So with the AdLib library installed, I can now access my component categories and library items through the library panel. And as you can see in the preview window, the symbol and footprint of each component is displayed here. To place a component, select the component category and the specific component and drag it into the design. And once placed, you can see that all of the parameters that we defined in the library have been brought into the design as component parameters. And just one other thing before moving on, have a look at this area of the library panel up here. Right-clicking it lets you define which of the library parameters are going to be made visible in the selection list. And you can drag the column headings to provide a form of filtering that lets you quickly locate the component you are looking for. Or for the really advanced users, you can run a parametric or SQL-based query to retrieve and display a matching set of components. So that's a quick overview of how components get placed, but let's quickly loop back to see how easily you can create a new component and add it to your library. In this case, I'd like to create a new 150 ohm resistor. Now because I've already got several similar resistors in my libraries, and all I need is one with a slightly different value, the easiest way to create the new resistor is to clone an existing one. Select the resistor to clone to display its detail record, and press the clone button. Add a new item number, which in my case is just a randomly generated value, and update the resistance value and the description accordingly. Hit the Create Component button and jump back into Altium Designer to see our new component. And like magic, there it is. And it's ready for placement immediately. Nothing could be simpler. So that's a quick overview of database libraries and just how simply AdLib makes it for you to deploy them in your organisation. There are a few more features of AdLib that I'll leave for another video, but the key benefits of the system are it provides a simple deployment model that gets you up and running with a centralised database library in minutes. It includes permission management and history tracking as standard features. It's easy to configure and offers virtually unlimited support for user-defined component categories and parameters. It can be accessed from any web browser so that library management activities don't need to consume an Altium Designer license. And it offers a scalable architecture that can be readily extended to incorporate SVN and PLM integration. So if your organisation is in need of a better component management system, why not solve the problem once and for all with an off-the-shelf database library solution? Because it couldn't be simpler.